No, you haven't stumbled onto a gaming channel. This is not a video game. This is your Redbubble store or your Tee Public store or your print on demand store. You've got 400 designs sitting on Redbubble and you're thinking, hey, I'm a nice little kingdom. I'm a nice little medieval kingdom. And you know, that's a nice feeling to have. And then all of a sudden you realize the niche that you're in, oh, there's other people with other Redbubble stores. There's other people with other T Public stores. Huh. Well, that's okay, because you're your own little kingdom and you've got your own little designs. And you know, you can still make some sales. But huh, the more you look at other stores, the more you realize you're exactly like them. When somebody comes into Redbubble or T Public, there's really no difference between your store and somebody else's store. It, it might it might look a little different. It might feel a little different, but for the most part, if I'm a, you know, Joe the consumer, I don't really have an opinion whether I buy from you or whether I buy from someone else. They're all the exact same. Huh. And then you realize some of these stores, they've got a lot of designs. Yeah, there's a couple that got, you know, 30, 40. But there's a few designs that are like, oh, there's some big dogs in that in that park. You've got a couple of stores that are selling the same stuff as you, and they've got maybe 10 times the amount of designs. Oh, that can be a bit depressing, right? Oh, uh, actually, no, it's even more depressing because Redbubble has thousands of stores, tens of thousands of stores selling hundreds and millions of products. So how do you cut through all that noise? How do you get what in the business world is called a competitive advantage. Well, I'm going to show you in this video how you can employ a social media strategy that if you do it correctly, and if you have patience, and if you're dedicated to it, you can build a moat around your business. You can build a moat around your Redbubble store, and you can have people coming to your store and only your store, or you can at least increase the odds that customers will come to your store looking for your products. I'm going to show you that in this video. Let's go. What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a great day. And I'm excited to talk to you today about a killer social media strategy. Was that not the most depressing opening to a video you've ever seen? It was like killing me when we're looking at all the competition on Redbubble. But you know what? It's a huge world out there and you just need a tiny competitive advantage. And I'm gonna show you today how to get that competitive advantage. So let's jump right in. I've got a lot of cool content here to share with you today. Okay, so at the top here, this is you, all right? Hardworking artist. And you've really got two choices in the print on demand world. And I'm sure you thought of this when you first started your print on demand journey. You thought, well, what do I do here? Do I go the route of Redbubble and TeePublic? And you know what I mean by that is you create designs, you upload them onto one of these two platforms, or maybe both. And you know, I would include things like Teespring or Zazzle in here as well. But the idea is you basically create a store that's exactly like all the other stores and you upload designs and you sell them and you put in your markup and, and that's it. Redbubble, TeePublic, they take care of the rest. That's one option and that's a legitimate option. I personally use that option. There's the other option over here, which is to create a store on Etsy and use basically a drop shipper, like a print on demand creator. And, and when I say Etsy, you could also use you know, your own website. You could open up a Shopify store, for example, or you could have a, you know, a, some sort of a launch cart, or you could do something where you're selling your own individual website and you're selling product. Now, it's the one on the right, the Etsy Printful is, is a lot more work. You're going to need to have customer fulfillment and customer service, and you're going to deal, deal with returns and cranky customers and tire kickers and people that aren't sure what they want. The nice thing about the Redbubble Tea Public model is you just sit back and let let the money roll in. That's how they kind of advertise it, right? Of course, we know we're spending Saturday night uploading designs instead of going to parties, but you know, it's still, it's relatively passive income in the sense that you don't have to do a lot of, a lot of customer service piece of it. Well, I'm going to show you a third option because I think what we find is frustrating is we look at these two options and we go, well, I wish there was a little bit of customer service. I don't mind doing a bit of customer service. I don't want this to be my full-time job. Well, I'm going to show you in this video a third option, and it involves social media. 
So some people are social media gurus. Some people are social media novices. This this social media strategy that I'm going to share with you today is relatively easy. Like any strategy, it may not be for everyone. And like any strategy, it's going to involve some hard work at the beginning, not a lot of results at the beginning. But if you push through and if you're, if you're patient, this can be a really powerful strategy. And that strategy is to use social media. And I'm going to use Facebook in this example because that's the social media platform that I'm most comfortable with. There's other social media out there, which is great. I mean, hey, YouTube is social media, right? I mean, it's we've got lots of social media channels, but I would encourage you to take a look at, so, at social media. In this example, I'm going to be using Facebook. Now, why do I like Facebook? I'll go through a couple key trends here, a couple you know things about this strategy on Facebook that I find particularly attractive. First and foremost, there's over 2 billion people on Facebook, probably going to be 3 billion here pretty soon. Actually, the pandemic helped us helped Facebook a lot, helped us vendors selling on Redbubble and TeePublic and just out in the world because there's a lot more online shopping and there's a lot more online social media presence. So if you're going to use this strategy, just know that the trend is working in your favor. There's a lot of people on social media. And I know we always hear in the news, Facebook is, you know, moms are jumping on Facebook and there's less people involved on Facebook. 2.7 billion is a huge amount any way you slice it. The other thing I want to point out is it's a completely free model that I'm about to show you. So if you choose to go this route, this route, it doesn't cost you anything. It's just going to be your time and your energy and your effort, which is really nice. And another thing I really like is that you have control of this. What I'm going to suggest in this model is that you are the owner of the social media strategy. And then, you know, nobody can kick you off. Nobody can ban you. Nobody can, you know, tell you what to do. You're basically the owner of your little franchise. So what I'm describing in this is opening up a Facebook group in on, on Facebook, having strangers join your Facebook group, it's a public facing group, and creating value in that group, and then having links to your store in that group. So I'm going to go through some examples of this, and I think you'll see kind of the power of this. And remember at the beginning, we want to try to build a little moat around your business. It's hard for people to not go to your store. You want to encourage people to go to your store and have the competitors stay out. So if I'm on if I'm on uh, Redbubble or TeePublic, I, why am I going there? I might Google. I might go on to Redbubble and TeePublic and think of them as the vendor. What I'm going to encourage you to do is adopt a mindset in this video that you're the vendor. People are not shopping on Redbubble. People are not shopping on TeePublic. People are shopping from you. So let's check that out. So here's an example of just, I just started searching Facebook groups at random. And this is one that popped up. It's called What's Happening in Denver. And it's a pretty small group. It's a public group. It's got 199 members. And really what this group does is, you know, the moderator of this group shares Denver related posts. So the idea of social media is that they feel, it's not just news, right? You can go onto Google News, you can watch the TV, the idea of social media is it's social, it's interactive. People can not only read a news article, they can comment on it, they can push back, they could argue, they could support. These are emotional things that people can do. So this is one group, pretty tiny group right now, but look at this group. If you guys have watched any of my videos on this channel, you know I love cats, and this is funny cats, cats make me laugh. And look at down at the bottom. This is a group, funny cats, and there's a little shop now button. So let's keep that in mind as we continue to look at these examples. Catsmakeuslaugh.com. Funny cats. Huh. This is great. So funny cats. There's a little about page on this Facebook group. And I'm in here going, you know, looking at this as, you know, regular guy. And I'm going, it says, we started this community as cat lovers. Please share your funny cats with us. So it's a group that's just sharing funny cat stuff. Could be memes, could be news articles with little videos. Funny cats. Well, check this out. There's nothing funny about what I'm about to show you right here. 164,000 people are part of this group in some way, shape, and form. They either follow it, some people like it, there's a website. That's no joke. 164,000 people have access every day on Facebook to a group that they themselves have joined. This isn't spamming. This isn't emailing a stranger. This isn't cold calling people on the phone. This is they chose to 
to join your group. And now there's 164,000 people and growing that are excited and they are part of a tribe. They're part of a group. They're part of a team. And that's big because if you can harness that power, you can drive interest to your store. Now, not everybody's going to buy something from you, but if you own the Facebook group, people will want to support you. I'll give you an example later on in the video about myself personally. Here's another Facebook group. This one's called I Am a Hockey Mom. Now, I live in Canada, so it's, you know, in order for me to have my Canadian citizenship, I need to, you know, enjoy hockey. I'm a little bit of a joke there, but not really. So here is a Facebook group called I Am a Hockey Mom. Check out her Facebook group. It's all t-shirts. Why do you think that is? Huh, I Am a Hockey Mom. Pretty cool. Here's the about page. This page is dedicated to all the great hockey moms out there. Check this out. 107,000 people like this and almost 108,000 people follow this. That's like a city. It's like a city of 100,000 people are following this lady and she's got her own website, soveryblessed.com. This lady's checking all the boxes, man. She is a winner. This is exactly what I'm su suggesting. She set up a Facebook group with dedicated content that people are inherently interested in. Now, notice I have not even begun to talk about product. I'm not talking about Redbubble at this point. I'm not talking about TeePublic at this point. I am talking about just providing value, just providing value in the world through a Facebook group. Okay, we'll jump into the overall strategy here in just a second. But I want to point out, this is interactive. So if you have a desire to provide value for people in something that you're passionate about, this is a great opportunity. Okay, so hopefully by now you see the value in doing some sort of social media Facebook group. And you could have a couple hundred people join, a couple thousand people join, a couple hundred thousand people join. But what is the actual strategy? So let's get down to the nuts and bolts of it here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find a niche that you're passionate about. There's no sense in setting up a Facebook group about country music if you don't like country music. That is just you like, no, thank you. That's not a great way to live your life. So I would ask, you know, sit down in a dark room, light a candle and ask yourself, Meditate on it for five minutes and go, what am I really passionate about? What Facebook groups do I join? What do I enjoy watching in my spare time for free? So here's just some examples that you can go through to help you brainstorm. Are you interested in any sports? And it doesn't need to just be major league soccer or NFL football. It could be sports that you maybe have played that are niche sports. Racquetball, for example. You might be swimming or rowing, you know, canoeing camping, hiking, some sort of outdoor activity or indoor activity. It could be even an activity like playing chess or checkers, backgammon, knitting, embroidery. These are great niches because boy, although they're not super popular, people who like them really like them and they want to connect with other people that really like them. How about movies? Not just the, you know, you don't just have to go after big movies like The Godfather. Go after a genre of movies. Maybe it's independent film in your country. Maybe it's romantic comedies from a certain time period. That leads me into the next one. What about time frames? I happen to be part of a Facebook group that sells vintage action figures. Now that's a niche, okay? There's not many... You know, it's not like general society has put up their hand and said, we all want to sell vintage Star Wars action figures. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty specific niche. So it's me and a bunch of other middle-aged men that love to look at pictures of Luke Skywalker from 1982. All right. So, I mean, it's, it's a great niche because it makes me feel connected to other people that aren't, you know, necessarily, I'm not going to see them at the Walmart and go, oh, I know you, you're a Star Wars fan. I go online and I connect with them and go, oh, this is neat. It's nostalgic. It's a nice reminder of my childhood. So you might have a 1980s focused group, a 1990s focused group, maybe a 2000 focused group if you're, you know, a younger person, right? Toys is a big one. It could be toys and games, could be board games, could be social board games. There's all sorts of niches that you can look at. 
television shows similar to movies you could set up a you know your favorite tv show or your favorite genre of cartoon as a kid your favorite genre of action show that sort of thing and another one is politics you know you want to think about are people interested and they want to engage well why would they want to do that well hey if if you're interested in civic politics maybe your local city state province region maybe you want to get involved that's a great idea too maybe you want to get involved in your location but it has nothing to do with politics that's okay i did a video a while ago and there was a united kingdom city that i'd never been to before and i'm you know i'm researching the, the city and i'm going wow if i lived there that would be like i would love to be an expert in in this town called ipswich which is in england it looks beautiful i've never been there but it looks amazing well i am an expert where i live and you are an expert where you live maybe you set up a local facebook group page and it's just local news local pictures people like to feel connected and another big one, I probably left the biggest one for last, animals. Now, I know you might think, well, I already saw a cat video. I already saw a dog group. Yeah, but there's tons of animals out there. And there's really obscure pets. I used to own a pet rat, for example. When I was much younger, I lived in a part of the world that allowed pet rats. And I had a pet rat. So to me, you could have you know, a pet snake. You could have a pet rat. You could have a pet otter. If you ever go on YouTube and, and look up pet otter, oh my goodness, your head will explode. It's so cute. I can't stand it. But there's lots of different types of pets out there. And so you could have an animal group, especially if you have an animal. If you own an animal that's a little unorthodox, maybe you have chickens in your backyard. What a wonderful Facebook niche that you could take advantage of. Because if somebody else either wants to have a chicken in their backyard or they do have a chicken in their backyard, they want to feel supported. They want to feel part of a group. So here's the first piece of the strategy, all right? You find a niche and then you get excited about the niche and then you actually go into Facebook and you create the group. So in Facebook, there's a section called groups. Now look, Facebook changes their, their uh, interface like every three months, it's super annoying. So I'm not gonna go into the nitty and the gritty on how to actually create a Facebook group because you might watch this video years after I've created it and all of these screenshots might look different. So bottom line is go into facebook obviously sign up get an account you're probably hopefully, hopefully you're already on facebook but if you're not sign up and then go into the groups and then click create new group so you'll be the owner of the group it's like your own little mini storefront inside of facebook and then what you'll do is you'll you'll then research the niche and you'll provide value in the group now notice again i want to stress i've not mentioned Redbubble, I've not mentioned TeePublic. You might be thinking, is he ever going to get to the part where I'm selling t-shirts? Yeah, believe me, that's coming. You need to get a loyal following of like-minded, passionate, tribal people that not only connect to each other, but connect to you. They're part of the Facebook group because they want to have value in their life. They want to provide value. So you're going to create content. So you could go on to your Facebook group and you could share news stories, share funny pictures, create your own funny pictures, ask people to post their pictures. So it's not like you're working 12 hours a day slaving away at Google News pulling down news articles. You could put up one post a day, two posts a day. You can also schedule your posts as well. So you could have them drop once a day for the next two weeks and hey, take off on vacation if that's what you wanted to do. You can also share photos. There's tons of photos online. And again, your Facebook group, you're not making money off it. It's not a commercial venture. So if you're worried about, oh my goodness, the public domain police are gonna come after me for sharing copyrighted content, not really. I mean, you're just sharing, it's a social group. It's not a business, you're not selling the, the story. So here's a bunch of you know funny cat pictures. And you could, you know, if you had a funny cat Facebook group, you could start it up and there's content content for days right this is where people lose their lose their their soul on facebook as they go on there for weeks at a time and they realize oh my goodness it's an endless pit of you know pictures news stories commenting you know it's it's a real time suck sometimes you don't just have to go to you know funny photos you can go on to 
you know, public domain websites. So if you've seen one of my other videos, I've got, you know, how to get free and legal public domain images. And, you know, Pixabay is great. So, I mean, again, you could share just pictures. And I'm just using cats here as an example. You could do giraffes. You could have zebras. You could have any of those niches that we just talked about. It doesn't even need to be an animal. It could be local news stories. Uh, I, you know, where I live, there's one called Out and About in my city and it's just sometimes it's just nature photos the person who runs the site just uploads he goes for a walk and he uploads a picture it's nice it's nice and people can comment on it you feel part of a community so this is leads me into the next part of the strategy you want to engage your audience so here's funny cats world here's a great example so this is funny cats world 181,000 views and this is two years ago this was posted. So this is, you know, if someone's thinking, you know, you might be sitting there thinking, whoa, yeah, 181,000 views, but that was, you know, 20 years ago. No, it was two years ago. Then 181,000 people looked at this post. So here's Funny Cats World. And, you know, we've got, be nice with them. You have no idea what they've suffered on the streets. Okay. So that's not very funny, but it sure is cute and it sure is engaging and it sure gets people in the feels. So this is where, you know, you've got 74 comments, 860 shares. Well, imagine if this is your page and you had a link over here to your tea public shop, to your Redbubble shop, and what your products were, were related to this page. You said, you know what? I'm going all in on funny cats. That's all I'm doing. My Reddit, my, uh, my Redbubble store rather will have 1000 designs and it will only be funny cats. And if they go to the Redbubble store, there's a social media link to this page. And if they go to this page, there's a link to their Redbubble store. And they go on TeePublic and there's a thousand designs with a link to this page. When they go on this page, there's a link to your TeePublic store. Do you see where I'm going on this? It's back and forth between the two. You're creating a cyclical brand where one leads to the other and one leads to the other. And now there's 860 shares where a complete random stranger, this is sitting on their Facebook page now with a link that when they click on it, they can see at least, or they have the potential to see it into your world, into your page. So it's like tentacles going out into, this, into the Facebook world. So here's the thing, you have a couple different options. You can have posts inside of your Facebook group that post your product. So it might be around say Valentine's Day, for example. Happy, you know, happy Valentine's Day, everyone from, uh, from our house to yours. If you're interested in my shop, we've got some new product up and you link to one of your, you know, you have a nice thumbnail and you link to your post. Now you might get, you know, let's assume, I'm just gonna go back here. Let's assume that 181,000 people are reading your posts or at least have the potential to. Let's say even, 1% even look at it. Well, that's 1800 views on that product. Okay, let's say that even 1% of those people wind up buying something, coffee mug, sticker, t-shirt. Well, that's 18 sales. That might be a lot more than a lot of us are getting right now. Now I understand you've done a whole lot of work, but this grows over time. Here's the thing, guys. This portfolio, nobody can take Funny Cats World away from the owner of this site. This is their page. They own it. So the only way they would get banned is if they violated Facebook's terms and conditions. They posted hate speech. They posted some sort of content that was so offensive that Facebook said, okay, we're going to ban your account. Well, I mean, the only thing these guys are going to get in trouble for is this is too cute. I mean, good grief. This is off the charts cute, right? What a great problem to have. So you're creating an asset on Facebook that will engage your audience. And if you decide to post your product and you do so sparingly, you don't do it every time, maybe one out of every 20 posts, maybe once a week, you know, you do a thank you on when there's special events that happen or, or something, right? You know, hey guys, we reached 15,000 followers. Thank you so much. And, you know, here's a link to my shop if you're interested in supporting me. Something you, know, you do it with, with gratitude and with graciousness. You don't just spam people all the time, right? But you would post your product and, and if these people are interested in your, in your Facebook page, they might be interested in you. They might want to support your endeavor. It's not charity. You're, remember, you're providing value here. So this is an example. We have Funny Cats World. 
We've got 433,000 people follow this. Can you imagine? Just like, just if you go for a walk today, or if you're in the shower, or if you're having a quiet moment, just imagine if you had 433,000 people that looked at what you were posting on Facebook. Again, let's use that 1% of 1% rule. So you post a picture of one of your t-shirts and maybe it's just a funny t-shirt. So I, I've actually done this. I've actually, this is, this is the, the personal piece that I'm gonna share with you right now that I promised earlier. I've posted online one of my products that's funny. It's a funny shirt. And I've just, I've not mentioned my shop. I've not, I've just put up a picture of it with a link to my store underneath, but that's it. And I've had people share it, like it, comment it. And the comments underneath are, we need this shirt. They'll tag other people. Hey, we need this. Now I'm letting them do the work for me. I'm not pushing my product on anyone. I just posted it on my page and was like, eh, this is funny. Makes me laugh. Oh, OMG, I need this shirt. Yo, that's what, hey, fine by me. Go ahead and buy it. Go to Redbubble. It's right there. They'll take care of everything. So imagine the 1% of the 1%. If you had 1%, you'd have 4,000 people like this. If that was 1%, they went to your shop and then you had 1% of that, you'd have 40 sales. 40 sales. Sometimes on Redbubble, those sales are three, four, five, ten dollars dollars $10, $15, 40 sales. Math can add up. And again, this grows over time. Okay, let's get into a pitfall. I wanna show you an example because you might get excited and you might start off. And then this is what I don't want you to do. I wanna be very clear about this. And look, you guys know me. I'm not a mean person. I'm not making fun of this shop. I'm not putting down this shop. I'm just using this as an example of where it looks like they started out really good and then the wheels kind of fell off. All right, so I'm on Facebook and I found this store called the Red Bubble Cat. And they started up in April of 2019. I think they did a lot of things right. But as you can see here, if I scroll up to the top, we don't see any actual likes or comments on any of these posts. And the reason for that is they have no followers. Nobody is like, they've put out the store and nobody has liked, nobody has followed. So let's just do a quick drill down on why this is because, hey, I don't want you to do all this work and then not have it work out. So we can see here on April 14th, 2019, the Redbubble cat added a shop now button to their page. You click the shop now button, it'll take you right to Redbubble. Just great. That's exactly what we want. Great logo, good enough name for the store, like, you know, for the, for the Facebook page, I mean. We go up here and we've got our, this cat definitely doesn't like bananas. Check out this and other designs. Boop, 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 here we go. Great, nobody likes it, nobody comments it. Here's another one, the red bubble. Angry as heck, cat meme. I always call it meme, I don't know why. I guess I'm old, I'm an old person. Anyway, they've got angry as cat, a angry as heck cat meme. Check this out in many other designs. They've got tagging, they're doing everything right. Why is nobody liking it? Why is nobody following it? Huh, here's another one. Check out the demon cat. Again, they've got a nice thumbnail. They've got hashtags. I didn't even talk about hashtags. These guys are like doing advanced stuff on, on Facebook. This is great. No likes, no follows. Why is that? Well, let's think back to the strategy. Where's the value? Where's the value they're providing? There's no funny cat pictures from the internet. There's no funny cat news stories. There's no content. I don't wanna just come to somebody's shop and shop. I wanna to come to somebody's Facebook group to interact with other people that enjoy the same niche as me. So you have to bury these posts, one for 20, one for 30, one for 50. Maybe you just put a link off to the side and maybe four times a year you say, hey, thank you so much for being part of this group. Here's my shop if you're interested in supporting. Or maybe somebody comes up with an amazing saying or an amazing slogan and you put it on a t-shirt and you go, hey, Check that out. If you're interested, here you go. Maybe you do a charitable initiative and you say, look, I'm doing a fundraiser and every dollar from every sale of every t-shirt, I'm gonna to donate to a local shelter. I don't know, I mean, you got tons of ideas, right? But it's this is just a shop. That's all it is. There's nothing else here. It's a Facebook group, got it, Facebook group. But there's only buy my stuff, buy my stuff, 
buy my stuff, buy my stuff. That's not going to work. Nobody wants to go onto a Facebook group about them. They want to go onto a Facebook group about themselves. They want to go onto a Facebook group. I want to go onto a Facebook group about me, not about you. So keep that in mind if you're looking at Facebook groups. When you set it up, don't even think about selling your own design. Put a little put a little link over in the corner to your T Public store, put a little link over in the corner to your merch by Amazon or to your Redbubble shop and that's it. Treat it like a charitable initiative for 6 months and just post valuable content that people will like and share and retweet and post and go, "Wow, that was amazing. I'm going to comment on it." Then after 6 months, think about thanking them and say, "Hey, if you'd like to support my shop, here you go." It's once in a while. This is 100%, 100% buy my stuff. That's way, way too high. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. You've got all the pieces now. You can go forth and conquer. Number one, be authentic. Don't just stand on a street corner and shout, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Provide value for people. Provide news. Provide pictures. Provide shareable value. People want to be engaged in something that they're passionate about. Okay? Providing value means you're providing content other than your product. Your product is a byproduct, like your product is a symptom of your shop. Like your like your Facebook group is your shop. That's your store. That's your little kingdom. And your and your Redbubble store and your Tee Public store sit inside of that. It's not the whole thing. It's like this YouTube channel. I'll use myself as an example. Why do you come to this YouTube channel? It's not to watch the ads. You watch this YouTube channel because you, I'm hoping I'm providing value for you and you're willing to trade a couple seconds of your time to watch an ad to support my endeavor because I need to keep the lights on and I need to keep you know my stomach full. That's, that's it. That's the trade-off. So people are going to go to a Facebook group because they will like the content you're providing value for them. And then some people will like it so much that they'll want to purchase funny stuff that they feel a part of. This is a big one. Be subtle. You don't want to just hawk your goods. You want to provide value for people in the in the site and then just mention on occasion, "Hey, if anyone's interested, I've got a new product in my shop." Or maybe you just post a funny picture of one of your or a cute picture of one of your designs and that's it. You're creating a brand for yourself. People are following you. That's the key. They're not just buying stuff off of Redbubble. They're buying stuff from you. And if you're an artist, and what I'm hearing in the YouTube comments is a lot of people are artists. They're saying, well, I'm an artist and I can't seem to get any sales. Great. People will follow you. You will have an art that speaks to someone and they will follow you. They will be fans of you. And what that means is that they're not buying from Redbubble. What it means is they're buying from you. And you have the power to control that social media in such a way using one of the greatest tools known to man. Facebook, for all its faults, is one of the most powerful social media tools ever invented, probably the most powerful social media tool ever invented. And it brings people together all over the world. And if you can harness even a piece of it and connect with people in a meaningful way, that's your ticket to building a little moat, a little bit of protection around your store where somebody can go to Redbubble and go, eh, I can buy any cat shirt. I can buy any dog shirt, but I want to buy from you. So I hope you guys found that helpful. I absolutely love talking to you guys and interacting with you on this YouTube channel. So if you want to leave a comment or leave a question, or if you've got an opinion, I love to hear it personally. I love seeing the comments down below. So feel free to like, subscribe. I really appreciate your guys' support and I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope I provided some value for you because that's what it's all about. Thanks a lot guys. Take care.